Hi viewers, this is Sri Ramalu. Today's topic is scintillation counter. What is scintillation counter? Principle. When high energy charged particles pass through active fluorescent material, some of its atoms are excited. Here, <coughs> suppose generally fluorescent material, one good example is a tube light in the home. Every tube light is uh, contain a fluorescent powder which is uh, coated inside the tube. So suppose it is a tube like this at, in your home. So it is uh, coated inside. So inside only it is uh, completely coated with a white powder that is a fluorescent powder. And uh, when high energy charged particles are passing through active fluorescent material then what happens when high energy charged particles are passing through a fluorescent material then this high energy charged particle can collide and give energy to the particles and these particles become excited okay next as these excited atoms returns to their ground states photons are emitted yes <coughs> so when out from outside high energy charge particles are entered and when they collide with the particles which are present on the surface of a material fluorescent material then this atom gains energy and becomes excited when excited atoms comes to the ground state then they release the energy that energy appear in the form of photon that is a photon the intensity of the light flash so produced depend depends on the energy given up by the charged particles here so charged particles enters into the tube or material fluorescent material and it given energy to the atoms which present inside the fluorescent powder or material and they gives the light that light appears in the form of a flash flash will come that is a flash next these flashes are converted into amplified electrical pulses by means of a photo multiplier tube okay so these flashes what happens converted into electrical pulses means current by means of by using by means of means by using photo multiplier tube it is a long tube the electrical pulses are then recorded electronically so these pulses can be counted that is the meaning next construction and working the main parts of scintillation counter are shown in figure yes in the down figure i will show you it consists of a scintillation chamber scintillation chamber photo multiplier tube electronic counter see main parts scintillation chamber photo multiplier tube and electronic counter means a device which can count the pulses and see let me show what oh, those things what are those see the diagram in the diagram the three main parts just now we explain see it is a device it is a photo multiplier device okay and at this side electronic counter will present okay this one thing scintillation chamber it is okay scintillation chamber photo multiplier tube photo multiplier tube and uh, this tube connected to the what counter electronic counter like this these three are main parts next okay so three four parts over scintillation chamber consists of aluminium casing in which a suitable scintillation crystal is placed okay so inside it uh, what what we what we will keep uh, we keep um, a crystals okay so by using crystals only we can produce a flash or photon flash means photons so where see that aluminium casing see the aluminium casing is this one it is aluminium casing so inside it what will produce the flashes will be produced or photon will be produced so inside it what will contain it contains a crystal right it contains a crystal next 
okay and uh, now next point the aluminum case shield the crystal from all the stray light what is the meaning of stray light so straight light means stray light means a light which come from outside that is called stray light okay so aluminum casing can protect shield mean it can protect by coming outside light so it has stop outside light it cannot allow the outside light uh, next the scintillation chamber is fitted at the end of photo multiplier tube so this scintillation chamber is fitted at the end which end it is a, a left end to the left and left side only this side only it is fixed left side see left side diagram inside the diagram see this is the chamber okay high energy radiation is allowed to incident on the crystal which produce tiny flash of light see flash of light means that is i showed you just now photons okay so when high radiations enter means uh, allowed means enter into the crystal when they fall on the crystal then they produce a tiny flash tiny means small flashes so this flash of light is called photon the photon from the scintillation chamber enter the photo multiplier tube and strike the photo cathode okay they strike to the photo cathode so photons are coming from where scintillation chamber and enter into the photo multiplier tube before entering the photo multiplier tube where they strike they strike the photo cathode where does it photo cathode see the photo cathode is this one okay so it is a scintillation chamber from this see the light rays are coming so these are the flashes are coming and a strike here once again let me show in bigger size now see clearly from this radiation center it is aluminum casing which contain inside the crystal inside crystal will present and uh, when this radiation enter into the crystals so crystals contains the atom this atom can be excited by the radiations and later they de-excite de-excited atom can produce a tiny flashes or photons these photons can strike to the photo cathode here photo cathode cathode means i said you cathode means that is a negative anode means that is a positive okay so they strike to the negative uh, device okay negative electrode then what happens so let me explain mm, after striking see after striking now photo electrons are emitted due to photoelectric emission okay when these photons strike to the photo cathode then what happens photo electrons are emitted okay so photo electron come outside the photo multiplier tube has several electrodes called dynodes so there are the many electrodes so here it is one electron it is another electrode and it is another electrode so these electrodes are named as dynodes okay so how many dynodes so i will tell you how many dynodes are there. so these are dynodes uh, okay Okay. Photo multiplier tube has several electrodes called dynodes shown by D1, D2, D3, D5. So actually D4 is here, D5. So on to which are progressively higher potentials are applied. Progressively higher potentials, potentials are applied means high potential, high voltage is applied. So for, for example, first two diodes contain 100 volts second diode cannot contain 100 volts it becomes 200 and it becomes 300 and they becomes 400 like this progressively means continuously potentials increases high potentials are applied these dynodes have specially prepared surface so as to has secondary electrons so dynodes means all the dynodes cannot be taken only specially means a dynode which can emit the electron when one electron strike to it if two electrons are striking it has to produce remaining two electrons so totally four electrons it has to give like this such, such a specially designed dynodes are 
taken here. So see the dinodes here. Once again clearly. It is a D1 dynode. Having the voltage is positive voltage 100. Why it is positive voltage? These electrons, electrons are negative. Electron has to attract. So that is why this is a positive voltage is given to the dynode. Second dynode is 200 voltage. Third dynode is 300 voltage. Like this, many dynodes contains and their value gradually increases. The electrons emitted from photocathodes cathode is accelerated towards the first dynodes. I said you. Electrons are negatively charged particles. Dynodes are having positive potential. Means they act as anodes. Then this uh, positive can attract the negative one. So that is why electrons travel towards it. Uh, when these electrons hit, when hit means they collide with the D1, then what happens? A few electrons are emitted. These electrons are called secondary electrons. See? Secondary electron means one electron comes from the photocathode, right? Photocathode. And this photocathode electron can strike the diode, dynode D1, and dynode D1 can give the next electron. So these electrons are called secondary electrons. The secondary electrons are accelerated towards a second diode D2. See, they travel towards why they travel towards the D2, D2 having the higher potential than the D1. Okay, so that is why. The electrons produced from the D1 can be attracted or accelerated towards D2. The electrons are further multiplied by the secondary emission. For example, dynode D1 is producing two. So when uh, one electron is coming from photocathode, it has strike to the D1 and D1 dynode, dynode D1 can give the two more electrons. So these two electrons uh, attract or collide with the second dynode that is a d2 then each collision can produce two more electrons and here two more electrons so like this uh, electrons are continuously increasing secondary electrons are increases the process is repeated at each dynodes resulting in a large multiplication of electrons will get okay so if you continue this process then what happens it gives two electrons and this can give the two more electrons and this can give uh, sorry this can give four electrons and this can give the 8 electrons and next one can give the 16 electrons like this uh, gradually what happen electrons are increasing once again see the diagram see one electron is coming it is striking to the dynode d1 dynode d1 is produced two electrons so again this collision can produce two electrons this collision can produce two more electrons like this how many electrons four electrons these four electrons are called secondary electrons again four electrons can produce here few more electrons so like this uh, electrons gradually increases these electrons are called secondary electrons there are nearly 10 to 14 dinodes in the photo multiplier tube how many dinodes present okay so 10 to 14 dinodes will present in the photo multiplier tube Finally, a highly amplified electric pulse impinges on the anode acting as a collector of collector of electrons. So finally, all the uh, all the electrons are attracted and they create what pulses these pulses can appear on the anode. Anode, so these pulses can be attracted by the anode. Anode can act as a collector of electrons. So anode means positive. So positive terminal can attract the negative charges. These pulses are given into the electronic system. These pulses are given to the electronic systems where they are counted. So here each electron can produce one pulse. Like this many electrons comes and many pulses are produced. All the pulses are amplified. These amplified pulses are given to the electronic circuit or system. And the electronic system can start counting these pulses. So like this, number of particles can be counted. Scintillation counter can count 10 to the power 16 particle per second. 
actually gm counter how many it counts just 500 only i explain you please see watch the video so gm counter just it counts 500 particles per second but yet 10 to the power 16 particles per second can be counted so that is why it is a best it is a best it is a better counter than the gm counter and what are the uses scintillation counter has many advantages over other detectors or counters either detectors or counters what are those they are high efficiency so that means they can stand for long time short time of rise so in the short time uh, rising means they uh, start uh, counting the particles and recovery okay so rise time means dead time recovery time means within short time it is ready to receive next particles and a large life of uses so uh, it can be used for longer time so that is uh, these are the main applications of a scintillation counter so friends don't forget watching this video and subscribing sharing to your friends okay thank you friends